Welcome back, everybody, to the Nerdcore Podcast, the podcast that reviews the movies and talks that nerd shit. This is episode 612, and it is your review of Pedro Almodovar's All About My Mother. As always, this is the nerd you're going to hear the host of the show. i my wonderful co-host, Brad Young Yoda. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a wonderful, wonderful Monday. Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. Yeah, Monday live and early on patreon.com slash the nerd core at the one dollar tier. You get this episode live and early before anybody else gets to listen to it or watch it on on uh, the public. All you need to do is go to patreon.com slash the nerd core and pledge to the tier at the one dollar. You get episodes live and early before anybody else gets to watch them. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Yep, like, subscribe, click right notification bell. Please. Right, right now. Yeah. Brad, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing... I almost been making it to work. Why? I woke up and my body was like, no. <laughs> oh, hope you don't have that new strain of COVID, man. Uh, that's, that's exactly what I was going towards. And I'm like, I think it was just my back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, it was totally... My body was just like, mm, you need another 20 minutes of sleep. So... I, I put my alarm farther and I put yeah. my alarm farther. And yeah. what's bad is the whole reason I got up and even went to work was this meeting and like, like no one showed up for this meeting. So it was like, dude, dude love it, dude. <laughs> like, ah, that's great. <laughs> there God, was really good think- reasoning for when there was good reasoning for why it happened. But at the same time, I was like, dude, I could have been like, you know, not going to work. <laughs> not gone to work. <laughs> I, I have so much PTO, man. <laughs> oh my god. Um, well, I'm glad that uh, you made it to work and you still tried, Brad. Yeah. Even though. Um, well, it, and I, I got to leave work early anyway. But we were at a. Um, what, what do you call it? It's not a. It's like a memorial. Like a. Uh-huh. Like a like, it's because it's not a funeral, but it's, it's like a memorial, like something. For like what I did for my mom? It, was it just like a gathering of people? And... Gathering, we celebrate her life. We yeah, know, yeah. So we, it still, was... we still kind of, what's it called, uh, talk about her death, but like it's more of like, you know, people hanging around and celebrating her life and yeah. having fun. Yeah, so it was a celebration of life. That's, yeah. that's a good way to put it. Um, yeah, yeah, For yeah. one of the neighbors who just passed away. Yeah. It was still considered a memorial, but we like to call it a celebration of life. We had, yeah. you know, food and everything there, and we did everything. For it was her, nice. Yeah. It was nice. I'd, I'd never met my neighbors before because it's generally, hey, it's generally because I leave at like five thirty in the morning, and then I come back at four thirty. Yeah. <laughs> so Brad's I'm... saying is that they're still woken up, and by the time that he comes back home, they're already asleep. Yeah, in the neighborhood I live. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, I just, I went to work today. I, um, just did all that. We, we were, we were doing some stuff here at the apartment. We were made, my Rachel made dinner and we played some games. Oh, very nice. I played a game and what you eat. Yeah. Uh, they made a type of pasta that they like to make with uh, ground beef, um, um, uh, broccoli, broccoli. Yeah. And, um, I don't know. It's, a, it's a, it was good. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I mean, I just don't like broccoli. Yeah, well, Brad, not everybody's a seven-year-old. I, I just have never been a fan of freaking broccoli. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, and don't be like, like you just got to put nacho cheese on. Like that's that's just because you like nacho cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just got to put nacho cheese, Brad. Yeah, you just got to put. If you put nacho cheese on most anything, it's probably better. Yeah, like, it probably tastes good, right? Ah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and I watched this film today. Um, I recorded my video for Wednesday, so I'm glad I did that because I'm gonna have to. Um, uh, edit it tomorrow, so yeah, uh, just did all that, uh, but other than that, just not much going on today, man. Uh, we're gonna be talking about this movie today, which is directed by Pedro Almodovar, a director that I know about, but I've only seen two films from him. Man, well, three, cool. if you consider like the short film that I watched from him, but like, like he looks yeah. like the Spanish um, David Lynch. Yeah, 
kind of does, doesn't he? He does, right? <laughs> yeah, bro. He's like got the same hair and the sunglasses, the beard going on. Yep. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's he, he looks cool though with the with the with the with the hair, man. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Brad. Um, uh, I guess if we have nothing else to talk about, we can get into this, right? Yeah, let's go. I still haven't uh, eaten, so. Yeah. Yeah, your Brad's Pick like, yeah, let's get this going. Pick it up. <laughs> yeah. All right, Brad. We can go ahead and get this going. So if you have not watched All About My Mother, you should probably get out of here if you care about spoilers. But if you don't care about spoilers or you've already seen the film, you can go ahead and stay. Either way, how any of that goes, this is your one and only spoiler warning. And it is in effect in a five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> All right. All About My Mother, or how it is pronounced in Spanish, Todo Sobre Mi Madre, is a 1999 comedy drama film written and directed by Pedro Almodovar and starring Cecilia Roth, Marisa Paredes, Candela Peña, Antonia San Juan, Penelope Cruz, and Rosa Maria Sarda. I just want to say, I think it's completely unfair for you to choose a Spanish movie. <laughs> Because you you will not butcher any of these names like usual. <laughs> it was between two films, and you you hit the, the, the coin toss, and you got this one, okay? That's true. Yeah. <laughs> the plot originates originates in Almodovar's earlier film, The Flower of My Secret, which shows student doctors being trained in how to persuade grieving relatives to allow organs to be used for transplant, focusing on the mother of a teenager killed in a road accident. All About My Mother deals with complex issues such as AIDS, homosexuality, faith, and existentialism. The film was a commercial and critical success internationally, winning the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film, in addition to the Golden Globe for Best Foreign Language Film, and the BAFTA Awards for Best Film Not in the English Language, and Best Director for Almodovar. The film also won six Goya Awards, including Best Film, Best Director, and Best Actress for Roth. Uh, the Goya Awards are the Spanish, the Spain uh, Oscars, for those of you who, want, who don't know. Yeah, um, this is produced by his brother, Agustin Almodovar. And the cinematography is done by Alfonso Bito, Jose, uh, edited by Jose Salcedo. Music is done by Alberto Iglesias. And it sits at an hour and 44 minutes internationally. And the U.S. cut of the film is an hour and, oh, my God, uh, 41 minutes? What did they cut? 41 minutes. I don't know. I guess I will three find minutes. It. It's three minutes, bro. What the fuck did they cut? What? Yeah. What? Yeah. That's unheard of. I don't know what you would cut, though. Wow. Well, well, like, is there a three-minute thing that just was like, the U.S. was like, nope. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Weird. Well, while we give our thoughts, I will go to IMDb to figure it out. But um, yeah, I don't know, Brad. I, I don't. I don't exactly know what you would cut from this. Like, this is 1999 as well. We're yeah. not prudes. Like, uh, also, you know. this budget right here. Holy God. Oh yeah. I'm sorry, Brad. Can you read that for me? I already clicked on uh, that. Budget four million nine hundred eighty-nine thousand ninety-one, and box office sixty-seven point eight million. The nineties were wild, bro. <laughs> you don't see that anymore. That doesn't not with happen. these movies. Yeah. No, that does not happen. Uh, a five million dollar, like less than a five million budget, and making sixty seven point eight million at the box office for you know a movie that would you could say nowadays is made for the the awards. The awards, yeah, yeah. All right, Brad. Um, so, what are your initial thoughts on All About My Mother? I uh, I actually really enjoyed this movie. Um. I thought it was, you know, for the most part, great acting. I thought I really liked the story in it. I didn't have much of an issue with any pacing involved. Um, there were some scenes, I do have to say, the only gripe I have is some of the scenes kind of reminded me of a Spanish soap opera. Just very <laughs> over-exaggerated, you know, acting. Not a lot. Maybe in like two scenes in the whole movie. Other than that, um, also um, the the Lola to me looked like um henry cavill so that was that was something <laughs> <laughs> um 
I was very entertained through this movie. Um, I thought it was good. Uh, Penelope Cruz is, does her part in this. Um, I'm guessing the mother was Cecilia Roth. Yeah. Yeah, Cecilia Roth. All, all Everyone who acted in this did great. Like, I thought they did really spectacular in this. And my only issue is that some of it, you know, probably from direction, did feel like a Spanish soap opera. Yeah. It's supposed to be like a comedy, but it's, I don't know. Almodovar is so, it's very different. I, I, um, I mean, there were some parts, like a little laughter here, but for the most part, I mean, I felt more like kind of drama. Yeah. He has more of a screwball comedy in his filmography that I've heard about that I want to watch. But like this one, I wouldn't say like it's a comedy. I think it's more go towards like drama. There's some parts that actually they kind of make me laugh, but there were like it was more of a really serious movie. Yeah. Um. So I, I first of all, I'll say I really like this movie. Uh. But I, this movie, like, I don't know, man. I uh, this movie, like, I I finished watching this movie and I was like, man, I really appreciate the sacrifices my mom made for me. And, you know, you don't really think about it when you're a kid, just like he didn't really think about it there. The, the, the kid didn't really think about it at that time when he asked her that question of like, you know, would you prostitute yourself for, for me to, to what's it called? Uh, to, to support me. And she's like, I've already sacrificed a lot for you. Yeah. Like, like, and I, and I, in and, and this movie made me think about that. It made me think about, you know, my mom, my mom sacrificed her, her college education to, to raise her, her, um, to raise her first son alone, you know, she she sacrificed a lot of things from from for her children, and um, and at times that she even sacrificed parts of herself for her children, yeah. and I think that that's what this movie kind of brings up, and it's like like it's what happens when you know the thing that you sacrifice the most about that has revolved around your whole identity gets taken away from you, and it's just Almodovar finds such a beautiful way of like bringing that in. To the script with this movie and uh this isn't the only film where he talks about his mom uh there's a lot of other films where he talks about his mom and um i i uh, pain and glory was the last one the first one i've watched from him and like he does talk a, a good amount about his mom in there and he, and he talks about how like his mom kind of knew that he was gay and he like what's it called still like very much loved he loved his loved him and how she he was just worried about how the world would like react to him and, and, and react to like who he is. And I just, I found, I found myself just connected so much to what Almodovar is trying to like explain in this movie. I, I mean, and I, I love how, you know, she, she loses her son, but then she like becomes the mother to like everyone she meets. Mm -hmm. That's really yeah. what ends up happening is she's, she's trying to, you know, find her way through this very deep, um, depression and sadness and she just yeah. ends up being so many people's mother and um in giving great advice to like penelope cruz's character and just being like it's your mom like your mom's gonna love you through anything and really the mom does come through and yeah you know is there so but but i i mean the uh, the well, the one main thing that kind of puts all this together is is Lola, who, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, her <laughs> bad decisions like just have repercussions throughout all this. Yeah, and and then she comes in at the end and she's like, ah, I didn't know I had a son. It's like, had you been there? Had you been had you, there? I, I mean, you're the adventuring type for sure. So, but had you been there, you know, you yep. would have you would have known. And I also have to say, for a movie that comes out in 1999, the way that it handles trans women, man, something that I I, I wasn't like 1999, man. You wouldn't think that this would be coming no. out at that time, and it does this, it with this wouldn't so be much, expected for that timeline, honestly. Yeah, and it does it with so much like love and respect, and it it brings up a lot like. Dude, the, the dedication at the end says to all actresses who have played actresses, to men who act and become women, to all the to all the people who want to become mothers, to my mother. Like it brings up a really big part of like, you know, of, of uh trans women, man. How like you it's know, a it's a love letter to say, mothers. Like, they're it's, women, yeah. It's love letter to women, honestly. Yeah. That's... Yeah. And, and, yeah, I I mean it's done in a very mature 
you yeah. know, very detailed way because you, yeah. you know, they, they, you, you end up seeing, yes, you have this, this transvestite on, you know, she's a prostitute, but yeah. then she ends up getting a job for one of the, apparently the most famous transvestite who's working in theater and on TV and all this. And it's just yeah. showing, you know, you know, how, how much in society they can be a part of. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I, I mean, the one who was acting, I'm sure many people didn't know that was a transvestite. And I thought when she was giving that, which was, that was a, such a funny, what's it called? A uh, part at the end, towards the end where she's like saying like, what's it called? My nose, like cost this much. My tits cost this much. My yeah. ass. And like, uh, I thought that that group of boys were going to try to make fun of her. And uh, you're like, oh no, no, they, they, they were just, they were in on the laugh. Like they were yeah. like, they were having fun. And it was really nice to kind of see this film and be like, okay, there's people who love and accept these women. And you know, there's, it's, it doesn't have to be a film that revolves around the, the, the trauma of these women because that trauma is found in different parts of this film. Like when they keep asking her about like her, her, her penis, it's like, they keep asking her like, you know, like, Oh, like what's it called? How, how big is it? Or like, you know, like what, what, why or didn't you take I it off? It or, can I see yeah. it like, why haven't you operated it off? And it's like, it's like, cause, cause it's none of your goddamn business. That's why this is none of your goddamn business. Yeah. And, uh, and everybody kind of treats her. And it's also interesting because it's like, you know, women are, uh, are, are seen as sexual objects. And when in this film, these trans women, when they transitioned, they're still seen as sexual objects. Yeah. Like, and it's in, in El Amodovar, brings that up in this movie and i did it like he does that so well and also i can never get over this man's cinematography i love his colors in these movies oh i, I love some of these <sighs> these settings he has the scenes um when i guess they're in the apartment and it opens up to the window and outside is i don't know is it like the church and it's got yeah. all the different kind of mosaics on it i'm like that's that's a great shot that's yeah. Oh my I, god, his reds when the reds oh yeah, like they pop. they pop and the the yellows pop so much too and it's just and and the 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 fashion choices in this it's yeah. the, everything like like it, your eyes are drawn to it as like it, it yeah. pops. Almodovar has an eye for detail, man, and it's yeah. something that he's kept prevalent in all of his movies. Like I've seen 3 of his movies now uh, in a short film and I can tell you that it doesn't change, bro. Like it's that this is how his movies look, and huh. they just look so stylistically pleasing. And um, even with that three minutes cut off, Which, I thought it was very well paced. Yeah, I still couldn't find where what exactly they cut out. Oh, I no. can't, I can't find it. So <laughs> who knows? Probably who, just who like who knows? Yeah. Which I don't know. It makes me wonder, like what what um what that original version looks like. So I, I would like to watch that original version, especially because I can understand the language. But, yeah. Uh, uh, but, I, I, I mean, I mean, just, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I really enjoyed the acting. I thought it was very well done by everyone involved. Um, and I, I like how they portray Huma. Yeah. Because you, you know, because you know, transvestite, like in the nineties, it, it was kind of, kind of taboo to say the least and Huma became so you know so well known and famous in this that they're just showing you know even even she can rise up above and people treat her you know with dignity and respect and all that and which was what they should be doing in the first place but yeah. it just shows like people are more willing to do that when you rise up in the ranks of you know you can be rich and you do what you want that's pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. It's like, yeah, you could. If you're rich, you could do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, and, no one uh, bats an eye. No one, no one bats an eye. Yeah, I really like this movie, man. I gotta say, I, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm very uh, pleased with, uh, with the third movie I seen from Pedro Almodovar. Uh, release the extra three. Oh, damn. Um, but <laughs> that's. I, I did. I did speak Henry Cavill's yeah. name. I'm looking at the Criterion version, and it says here that what's it called? Uh, this one is uh, 101 minutes, which is so what it, the that's the cut. 
Yeah, that's the U.S. cut. Yeah. Man, y'all are lame. But what is it? It just like it's such a random small like number of like three minutes. Like what? What was in that three minutes that was cut worthy? I don't know. I don't know. But um, uh, yeah. Point is, I really like this film, and I, I think that it's just it's just another beautiful film from a uh, Moldova, a movie that I've been wanting to watch for a long time because I've been wanting to just explore this man's filmography more since I watched Pain and Glory, which I have to say is another great film from him. With uh, I think I honestly might say that Pain and Glory is my favorite performance from Antonio Banderas, and of course, as always, freaking Penelope Cruz is fantastic in this movie. I just, I wish he was more in it. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, like, she's terrific when on screen, but she wasn't, like, in there a lot to me. I just, you know, which is fine because the, <clears throat> the mother the mother in this, who the story's about, really about yeah. it, it is terrific in it. So, it, I mean. Yeah, but I, I just like seeing Penelope Cruz on screen. I'm just <laughs> yeah, I love I love that actress. She's one of my favorite yeah. actresses, and she she's just incredible, man. Um, so I really liked her in this film, but of course it is Roth. It's Cecilia Roth who steals it, steals the whole show, and she's just incredible in this movie. And like there, there's something that's like there's a there's a point made in this film where like she doesn't ever have a moment to really like take in what's happened to her. No, because because like I said, she's busy being a mother to everyone else. Yeah. The only time she really takes care to what happened to her is that is basically when she's on that train with that child. Yeah. Getting the fuck out. Or when um when the when she's like taking uh when the mom of uh, Penelope Cruz's character comes there comes home and checks on her and she asks her about like if you had a kid and you can tell that she's just like holding it in right she's holding it in. And when she closes that door, she and just, just lets, she it, out. lets just it out. Guttural scream. Yeah. It's just oh, what an incredible, what an incredible performance, man. Probably included a scene with Samuel Jackson just in case they want to make a sequel. All of on my mother foot. <laughs> yes, Stacy. Just Sam Jackson saying motherfucker at the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, what a Slow great pan. film. Uh Brad, what is your final verdict for All About My Mother? Ah, I really like this one. So, um, like I said, the only thing is some sometimes the acting seemed like a Spanish, Spanish drama, which isn't a, necessarily a bad thing. But um, I think I'll give it an eight and a half out of ten. Ooh, I'm coming in lower than you, Brad. I like. I really like this movie. I really like this movie, uh, but it's just not as good as the other ones I've seen from him. And really I've never seen though. any other ones. So yeah, I might so that might go... change if I watch some other ones. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with an eight out of ten for this one. I, I like this movie though. I really That's like still it. Still good scores. That's good score yeah. for a 1990 film, 1999 yeah. film. Yeah, and I don't mind the 90s. It's the 80s that I have a problem with. <laughs> yeah, but um, a fantastic film. I wish we could see that 104 minutes. Uh, but who just knows? That, what, what the hell? The three minutes. Just like even a little explanation of like what what three minutes were cut. Yeah, I can't find it. And I looked it up on Google, Brad, and I get all these fucking uh, articles about how to cut out your Texas, your to- tux- Texas, your to- your toxic ex mom, your toxic mom. And I'm like, that's not what I'm looking for, dog. You bastards. It's like, I'm just what trying I to want. find out what they cut out, bro. Like, I get it. Y'all, y'all got toxic parents, and I know, and it's okay. I know that happens in your life, but I'm trying to find yeah. out what they cut. I got to cut out from this movie. Yeah. But um, fantastic movie, and I do highly recommend it. And yeah, he's just what an incredible film, what an incredible director. But that's it for our review of All About My Mother. As always, you can check us out on the nerdcore.com. Twitter is at the nerdcore underscore. Instagram is at the is at the nerdcore. Patreon.com slash the nerdcore. At one dollar, you get this episode live and early before anybody else gets to watch it. Right now, you have access to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem review. Mm-hmm. And Blue Beetle review before they drop this week, this week and next week. So check that out before anybody else gets to watch them, and just enjoy that for as low as one dollar. Talk to us about this movie in our Discord, please. Click that notif- click that link in the description, and talk to us. Also, talk to us in the comments. Tell us, have you seen this film? Are you a fan of Pedro Almodovar? What movie do you want us to talk about next from Pedro Almodovar? We would. I think we're pretty much open to 
to uh, to discover more of his filmography. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell when you subscribe so you don't miss a single review that drops on the channel. If you're listening to this on the audio side of things, make sure you leave a five-star review. It would help us out a lot. And you can do that on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. And of course, Brad, without the Patreon supporters, it's not possible. We want to thank our Patreon supporters so much for making this possible. We love you all so much. But we have to give an extra special thanks to Shane. Where can they find our producer, Shane? You follow our friend Shane at twitch.tv slash XSRK or on Twitter at thriftedil or go follow or go uh, buy something from the subby hut at prisoncityvintage.com. Yep. And of course, I hope you all had a wonderful time with this review. And yeah, I'm definitely going to add this to my uh, list for the upcoming Criterion sale in November. I might want to pick this one up. I want to see is what this is. Is it in a 4K? Like. Nah, Blu ray. Oh, okay. Yeah, but who knows? It looks man? pretty good yeah. already. Um, I don't, I think only one of his movies is in 4K. And it's hmm. like you have to buy this big ass, like uh, Sony's Pictures classic box set with it. I'm ready to get it. Yeah. So it's like, I'd rather get only his movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Can like, I break that up, please? Yeah. It's like I, I just want this one movie, man. I don't want to buy this whole big um <laughs> this whole big all these movies. Yeah, yeah. Though that one does include the devil's backbone on Ooh. uh on 4K. Oh, well there you yeah. go. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But of course, without further ado, let's go ahead and get out of here, Brad. Let's go ahead and send them out. All right, Roll. Thank you. Being host as always. Thank you to Stacy for joining us in chat. Thank you to all the listeners out there, all our Patreon supporters. We appreciate each and every one of you. And um, to end this episode, I don't know. Uh, watch out for stones to heads. Don't go ask for an actress's um, autograph in a busy street. In the rain. In the and rain. then run after that car in a busy street in the rain. You make your mom sad. Young Yoda out. Did they have to name all their kids Esteban? <laughs>